Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is a mini lesson on constructing explanations with evidence, evidence-based reasoning. So uh, the icon for explanations is always uh, solving a puzzle because that's what we try to do in science. We try to figure out in a phenomena what's causing that phenomena. And so in this video, we're really going to talk about not only the phenomena and the question that we're trying to answer, but how do we build an explanation that's just not an explanation that comes from our brain, but it's an explanation that's based in evidence. And so we'll be looking at evidence. There'll be a lot of evidence. We'll look at it and figure out which of this evidence is most important. Remember, a phenomena is always going to be the effect that we're trying to figure out, and then the cause is the explanation. So after watching this video, you should be able to look at a phenomena like uneven tire wear on uh, a car or even tilapia growth and how different ponds might affect their growth. I'm going to start by showing you how to look at evidence related to this uh, red and green block and then you'll have a chance to do the same with this old calculator. So let me clean this up and we'll get started. Okay, so I've got these two blocks. I've got a red block and a green block and they're kind of the same length. They look like they have the same dimensions and they have similar behavior. However, if I put them on a table and I'm just gonna put my finger on the top and release it, when I let it go, the red block will just fall over so it doesn't remain stable. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna write down what is the phenomena, what is the effect? So the phenomena that we're trying to figure out is uh, we've got a red block that's unstable. So the green is able to just stand there, but I let go of the red, it falls down. So we're trying to figure out what causes it to be unstable. So let me write down the question. So the question that we're trying to answer is what causes the red block to be unstable? Now I could do a bunch of experiments on this, but that's not what this video is about. This video is about looking at a bunch of evidence and figuring out what evidence would help us figure out an explanation for the phenomena and what wouldn't. And so as I look through this, the first evidence I have is block paint colors and brands. So this just tells me how they were colored. And so I would say this evidence is not going to be that helpful. If we look at the next one, we've got a photograph of the blocks in water. So you can see that they float a little different. So I would say that's gonna be helpful evidence. Next one, we're looking at the block masses, volumes, and densities. So I would say, as I look at the data, they kind of have similar mass, similar volume, similar density. So I don't think that tells us much. If we look at the next one, there's some block magnetic attachment points. And so I can see that a magnet is sticking in different points and I can see a difference between the red and the green. So I'm gonna say that's good evidence that I would want. The next one is the block external dimensions. So this shows me how big the blocks are and they look very similar. So I would say that's not helpful. And then the last one, red block is balanced on the green block. So it looks like in this photograph, you can actually make the red block stable by having a balance on the green. So I think these three pieces of evidence are important. So the next thing I want to do is I want to organize Okay, so I've summarized by saying that since they float differently, especially from evidence to the red block with its short arm down, also the idea that the red block can lean on the other, and also there's some difference here in this arm that the magnet can stick there. So now I think I have an explanation, so a cause for the instability of red. So let me write that down. So again, my explanation is that there's a metal weight or a weight in the arm of the red block. So I'm thinking there's a weight in here. And since that is heavier, it causes it to 
fall down. So that's my explanation. Now the last thing that I have to do, I've got some good evidence. The last thing I have to do is I have to write some reasoning down. That reasoning has to connect my explanation with the evidence. And so it's not just a restating of the evidence. So let me write some of that reasoning down. Okay, to show you my reasoning, I think these first two pieces of evidence, both that it, blo it floats kind of with that short arm down and then the fact that it can lean on it, those are both, both good evidence that the, there's a heavier short arm in the red block as compared to, this is the red block here, as a, compared to the green block. And I think this one right here tells me that it's metal. I think it's metal because metal attracts magnets. And so if the magnets are able to stick on the short arm, then I'm thinking it's metal. And so this is my explanation. It's based on evidence that I was getting. And if I go through that again, what are the steps you do? First of all, you look at what evidence is actually going to helpful, be helpful in making me come up with an explanation and then go through come up with the evidence, write an explanation, and then connect that evidence back to your explanation. So that is evidence-based reasoning. I'm gonna clean all this up and then I'm gonna give you a chance to do one of these on your own. Okay, for the next phenomena, we have a calculator that's been used quite a bit. You can see a lot of wear. There's also some important evidence on the back of the calculator and other evidence here, so I'll include that down below. What I'd encourage you to do is pause the video, go through and you do some evidence-based reasoning. Go through and sort out what's important evidence and then identify an explanation and some reasoning. Unpause and then come on back. Okay, so the first thing I would do, I've got a really worn calculator. First thing I would do is I would write down what's the phenomena and then what's the question. Okay, so uh, we've got a phenomena or the effect of a worn out calculator or well used calculator. We've got a question about what caused it. Now you might just like jump to an explanation. So it's got to have been used, but there's still a lot of evidence that we need to look at. So what I'm going to do is look at the evidence, not only evidence on the front of the calculator, on the back. I'm going to sort through some of this evidence as well. So as I start to look through that, um, do photographs of the components on the inside of the calculator, would that help us understand what's going on? Let's look at some of that. It just shows me what the circuit is, so I don't think that would be helpful. If we look at the next one, a, get, a guide to how the calculator works. So what are the different functions on the calculator? It's probably not going to tell me exactly how it's been used. Um, we've got a 99 cent store flyer, which is kind of interesting, so let me hold on to that. And then we've got a calculator, so you could get one of these that's new, so that would be allow, at least allow us to see how it's changed over time. So we've also got the worn out, it looks like the 9 key has been worn out a bunch and then they tape some paper on it, and a lot of these are worn out. Uh, and then there's a bunch of stickers on the back, so we've got some 99 cent stickers as well. So I'm starting to kind of figure out what's an explanation that I have, but we don't do that first. Remember, we're going to list all of the evidence that we think is important. Let me do that. Okay, so the evidence that I've uh, brought together is number one, the buttons are worn out, especially the nine buttons worn out a ton. When we compare it to the evidence four, where we can see that the nine it clearly is going to show up. Um, the next one, the stickers on the back, we've got 99 cent stickers and a 99 cent store on the back, I think is important evidence. And then a flyer from the 99 cent store where it looks like almost everything ends in 99 cents. So that's good evidence. So now I'm starting to understand what I think is going on. Next thing I would do is write down an explanation or a cause.
Okay, so my explanation and my cause are the same thing. I believe that the calculator was used for checkout. Somebody was working at a 99 cents store, here's a flyer, and as they used it, it just got worn out. So now I've got some good evidence, I've got an explanation, now I have to come up with reasoning. Remember, reasoning is a logical connection between the evidence and the explanation. So let me write that down. Okay, my reasoning, I think the buttons are worn because when you hit a button over time, it starts to wear down on the paint on the top, especially the nine. The next one, why are the stickers important? I think the calculator was probably just around, and so it's a space where loose stickers could get stuck to it during checkout, or maybe the checkout person actually stuck them on the back. And then the last one, the nine button will be pressed twice for most items purchased. Since they all cost 99 cents, each time you check it out, you're gonna have to hit at least the nine nine twice, so it's gonna get worn over time. So this is evidence-based reasoning. What you're gonna start with is not an explanation, but looking through the evidence, and then trying to get build your reasoning based on that. And so now that we've done it with the calculator, you could try this again with uh, some samples down below. I've got some data on some worn tires, or you could even look at these tilapia and how they grow in different ponds. But that's evidence-based reasoning. Again, you always start with the evidence, then you make an explanation, and I hope that was helpful.